In this video, I will talk about the uses of bash source command. At first, I will give a brief introduction about the bash source command. Also, I will talk about the differences between executing and sourcing a bash script. In the later sections, I will demonstrate three examples of sourcing a bash script using the Ubuntu terminal. So let's get started. At first, you should understand the term sourcing in bash scripting. When you source a bash script, it allows you to run commands which you have defined in your script within the current shell session. Meaning, when you launch or run the script, your system does not launch another new subshell which is also called a child process in theoretical term. And this is much more helpful when you need to load the environment variables, also define your own functions and execute commands which affect the current shell session. Now I will be talking about the differences between executing and sourcing a bash script. There are three main differences between executing and sourcing a bash script. Firstly, when you execute a script, you open a new shell which runs the command and returns the output. Whereas when you source the script, it runs the command directly in the current shell session. Secondly, any changes or modification made to the environment and its variables or aliases are limited. That is, all the changes will get lost once the shell is closed. However, when you source the script, the changes made to the environment will take effect and it will stay updated in your current shell session. The basic command syntax for executing a script is using the dot slash notation, that is, you write dot slash then the name of the script whereas when you source the script you have two alternatives that is you can use the dot notation or you can use the source command to source the script now i will demonstrate three examples of sourcing a bash script in the ubuntu terminal so let us see it in details now i will demonstrate a simple example of sourcing a bash script using the source command. At first, I will create a script named envsetup.sh. To do so, I will use the nano command. The nano text editor pops in the terminal. Over here, I will edit my script. At first, I will write the shebang line. This is the most important statement of your entire script. This line specifies what kind of interpreter is going to be used to execute the script. Here we are using the bash interpreter. Now I will use the export command to export a variable named my variable. Here I will define the variable as hello world. Now using the export command, it will make the variable my variable available to all child processes of the current shell. Now I will save the bash script using Ctrl S and exit using Ctrl X. Now I will use the source command to source the bash script. This will update the variable with the environment of the current shell. Now the script does not generate any output since I haven't used any echo command. I have just used a export command to make my variable available with the current shell. Now I can access my variable using the dollar sign notation. This will print what I have defined my variable in the script, which is hello world. In the second example, I will show you how to source functions using the source command. Here I will source and use a function defined in one script with the help of another script. For this, at first I will create the first script which is ole.sh. I will use the nano command to edit the script. First I will write the shebang statement. Now I will write a commented line where I will be writing defining functions to make my code understandable. Now here I will write my own defined function. I will name it hello world. 
here I will just print a simple hello world statement so I will write the echo command and the statement now my function is well defined so I will just save the script using ctrl s and exit using ctrl x now I will create my second script inside which I will source the first script I will name the script hello.sh first I will write the shebang line now here I will source my first script where I have defined my hello world function first I will write a commented line defining what I am doing which is sourcing the script lay.sh here I will use the source command and write the name of the script which is ole.sh now following that line I will just simply call the function hello world which I have defined in my first script ole.sh now when I will execute the second script hello.sh it will source my previous script where I have defined the function and later on it will call the function to print the statement hello world so let's see the output now i'll save this script and exit using ctrl x now it's time to execute the hello.sh script it shows a permission denied error now it is very important to remember you have to provide the executive permission before executing a script i have done the error intentionally to make you remember that it is a very good practice to add the executive permission when you are using the dot slash notation. Now I'll use the chmod command to provide the executive permission to hello.sh script. Now I'll run the script using dot slash notation. This will display the hello world statement on my terminal. Also this will source my previous script where I have defined the hello world function. In example 3, I will show you how to modify the environment. Here I have created a script named aliases.sh where I have already copied the entire script. In the script, I have defined two new aliases. Aliases are shorter versions of commands or command combinations. Here the alias ll is defined with this command which is basically ls-l command piped with a grep command which will find the pattern downloads and the new alias is defined with this command which will fetch the distro now i will save the script and exit using ctrl s now i will source my script using source command now the new aliases are available in the current shell session so i can access them now i will just type LL and it displays me the generated output in the same way i'll type new it shows lolcat cannot be found it has to be installed let me first install the neofetch package using sudo apt install neofetch for this you require your password this will take some time install all the packages After all the packages are downloaded, let me rewrite the command again. Sorry, the new alias again. For this new command to work, I have to also install uh, the above three packages or any version of the package. After that, this command will work. So that was all for today. In this video, I have showed three different examples of sourcing a bash script. If you want to know further, you can refer to the article provided in the video description below. Thank you for watching.